Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, and today I am at one of the most iconic destinations in Southeast Asia, which is the Golden Triangle. I'm standing in Thailand. You have the Ruak River, uh, which divides Myanmar, and the Mekong River, which then divides Laos on that side. And there's so much history that has happened in this area, but at the same time, it is a beautiful, peaceful area. And today we are gonna go on a food tour and also a little bit of sightseeing. We're gonna start here at the Golden Triangle uh, Park and viewpoint uh, so we can see all three countries. And then after that, we're gonna go, there's not a lot to eat around this area, but we're gonna go downstream a little ways to a town called Chiang Sen, which is an amazing little town. Uh, there's an amazing Chinese restaurant and also also, they have some great food along the river's edge in the evening. And I'm gonna share this experience uh, and all of the delicious food with you in this video. Starting off today at the Golden Triangle Park, which is a series of temples and shrines and just mega monuments. There's elephants, uh, there's the famous Golden Triangle Golden Buddha, which is within this park. And so it's kind of an area where you can just walk around, you can uh, visit the monuments, go to the different sites, um, and then also get to the, the viewpoints of the Golden Triangle of Myanmar, of Laos, across the rivers. Can you climb to the top of those elephants? Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, elephants are a large part of the culture here uh, in this area of Southeast Asia. And this elephant, it says that you can, you're supposed to walk around the elephants three times, I believe, or you could just climb up this flight of stairs to take a picture at the top of the elephant. You can actually see my right there. Where's that? Ah, whoa, kind of high up here. Wow, it's so quiet. It's so peaceful today here. And then normally to get in here, you pass underneath the belly of the elephant. That's what I saw other people doing. And then come here, this side, and you can climb up the stairs. And then one of the most iconic sites is the golden, the golden triangle, golden Buddha. And then you get to the other side and there it is, your first view. That is the golden triangle. Pass under the elephant again. And I think there is a trail, a path that leads along the, the side of the river that we can walk a little bit and get an even closer look at Myanmar, uh, especially because that's closer than Laos. Down on the river's edge, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand. And then also if you look at a map, we're very close to China, uh, just a couple hundred kilometers from Yunnan. While we're standing here, it's just a quick history about what this area, how this area is so well known and so famous. In order to understand this area more, you have to back up to the 1950s uh, when the Chinese Communist Party uh, outlawed and started banning and enforcing the growth and use of a plant called opium poppy. And so during that time, the production moved south to this region of northern Thailand, Myanmar, uh, and Laos. Communities uh, in the mountains, in the hills, in this area, in this region, were uh, and even forced into growing the opium poppy plant, the flowers. So this area quickly transformed into the hub of the world uh, for the opium poppy trade and growth. And with the production and the trafficking of an illegal substance, an illegal drug, uh, comes a lot of pain, comes a lot of suffering, and a lot of hardship in this area. And then that being said though, it is an area of hope at the same time because there are so many villages, there are so many people from the communities 
hill tribes in this region that have shifted from growing illegal substances uh, to growing things like tea and coffee. Okay, and that is just a very brief history of the Golden Triangle. There's so much more to it, um, and you can, of course, read all about the Golden Triangle. And now just a quick hike up the staircase uh, to the temple up here. But this staircase is beautiful, made from stone uh, with, I believe, the Naga snakes leading up to the temple. And this is a historical temple as well. Welcome to Wat Pra Tat Pukau. Uh, this temple was constructed, Alana Thai, Northern Thai temple. It's dated to around the 14th century. Wow, that is the way it has just kind of sunk and slumped into the ground, into the mountain. Wow, yeah, so peaceful, so quiet. It almost feels like a cave. From here, we are gonna drive down the Mekong River uh, to Chiang Sen, which is the main town not too far away. It's, I think it's just about five kilometers uh, where I'm getting hungry, it's time for lunch. Welcome to the extremely relaxing and extremely laid-back city of Chiang San. Well, this is uh, the major city of the Golden Triangle in the Thailand side. And so, specifically, I wanted, I've been looking forward to coming to a restaurant which is called Ran Kiao Siang Hai, which is an iconic, it's a legendary Chinese restaurant right across uh, the street from the river in, this is downtown Chiang San. It's so laid back. This is just an old school Chinese restaurant. They're known for their dumplings. They have a variety of dishes. I love the, the outside look of the restaurant and even the giant clay jars at the, at the opening of the restaurant. Okay, Ying is already ordering some food. I order a big hand with Tau Hu Sei Chua. You want to eat this one? Yeah, sure. Ah, this one. From what I was reading, I just looked up this restaurant. I mean, I had known about this restaurant, but then I just looked up some information. I saw Lonely Planet included it, and they said that it's a popular restaurant, especially for uh, Chinese ship crews sailing down the Mekong. Uh, and we're at the Bang, near to the Chiang San port. And so this is a stopover, and so this restaurant especially caters to a lot of uh, the Chinese ship crews. Oh man, I'm ready for some Chinese food. And from the photos in the menu, it looks delicious. Oh, oh man, okay. So at the front, they have uh, a wok going with a steamer with some different soups, some herbal soups, and looks like some preserved vegetables going on. Um, and then in the back, she's making some uh, dumplings, frying some dumplings, and then also steaming the xiaolongbao, the soup dumplings. Uh, okay. Uh, again with all the different stoops and boils and herbal blends and preserved vegetables. Um, and then I had to order, we didn't order one previously, but I had to order that top one with preserved uh, mustard greens maybe. Uh, but she said Yunnanese style and Yunnanese pork on the bottom. Ah. Like an upside down pineapple cake. She flipped it down revealing the pork on the bottom and the vegetable underneath. Oh, that's beautiful. And then she just pulled out the soup dumplings as well. I think everything's on the table. Wow, we just ordered a feast. <laughs> oh man, this is an amazing restaurant. And it's, it's so classic Chinese. The food comes at you classically fast too. Just straight out of the kitchen. Uh, a few things are cooked in the front, but most of the dishes are cooked in the back. We've got the hot, fresh dumplings. We've got the, the fried dumplings. We've got mushrooms, that Yunnanese preserved vegetable, fried long beans. There's fried chicken with chilies, one of the greatest dishes ever. Uh, we got some tofu. Oh, that chili oil looks amazing. <laughs> Micah got some noodles, which he's already starting with. And then 
totally forgot about this dish, which is uh, kind of a, it says mala, which is uh, Sichuan pepper with fish, with noodles, with soup, with vegetables. Oh man, this smells unbelievable. It's been a few months since I've had Chinese food and I am ready. The aromas, everything smells incredible, but you have to begin with the xiaolong pao, which are the soup dumplings. I'm just gonna go ahead and immediately go into the chili oil. This is just too good to resist. I can't handle it. The chili oil looks amazing. Oh man. Okay, that will be good for now. Dumpling. Oh, these are beauties. Oh, and I can just put, I just put my chopsticks underneath it. Look at what they've done here. I don't think I've ever seen that. Look. A carrot on the bottom. Maybe to hold in the juices to keep it to, to, so they don't stick too. And normally there are some techniques how to eat them. You can kind of suck off the top, you can drink out the juice so it doesn't burn you. But I think they've been sitting here for long enough actually. I, I took a lot of photos, got some extra footage, so they're definitely not too hot. I think I can just bite it all in one bite. Mm. Oh wow, yes. Oh, that's delicious. The gummy wrapper, the meat just crumbles in your mouth with the chili. <laughs> so good. One more while we're at it and I'll dip it into the, I think this is the sauce that came with it. Mm. Well, it's just warm, it's comforting. It's fresh. Okay, the next dumplings, we also got another plate of fried dumplings. Gyoza, or like pot stickers, which are steamed and then just pan fried, just to sear off the edge, just to give it that crunchy edge. And I'll dip into this sauce uh, with sesame seeds and lots of ginger in there. Oh, I like that ginger. Oh, these are really good. I think it's pork, but also scallions or green onions in the, in the center, and I love that. It's like a vinegar, soy, a little bit sweet, but the fresh ginger in there is what makes it. Next up, maybe try some of these string beans. Stir fried, you can see on a, an extremely hot wok fire. A little bit of mixed, minced pork and a little bit of chilies in here. And garlic. Oh yeah. Oh wow. You can taste the, the smokiness of the wok in those. Soft yet crisp, garlicky, and here's my rice. Mm. We also got a plate of fried chicken, uh, Chinese fried chicken, kind of Sichuan style. You can see Sichuan peppercorns in there, Sichuan pepper, you can see the, the ratio of chicken to dried chilies. Fried, there's green onions in here. Oh, there's even peanuts and there's, there's even cashews. Awesome. Oh, that's amazing. Cashews, I don't even know how to get everything on one bite. Oh, oh yeah, because down below, look at all the Sichuan pepper, corns, all of the chili seeds. Oh man, to be able to maximize your bite, you need to use a spoon on this. Oh wow, okay. That is next level. It's so fragrant. Immediately you get the burst of the Sichuan pepper, the citrusiness of it, the crunch of the chilies, oh wow. Those chilies are decently spicy too. The crispiness of the chicken, oh, and then the, the crunch of the, I got both peanuts and cashews in that bite. Everything fried, oh. And as you keep on chewing, you start to, to get a tingling of your tongue from the Sichuan pepper. Mmm, what a mix. I love how it's fried dry as well. So many different textures, so much flavor. Oh, and ginger in there too. Need to follow with rice. That chicken dish. That is one of the better versions I've ever had. Okay, next up we also got a plate of shiitake mushrooms, which I think have just been um, lightly fried, just wok fried. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Like the juices that come out of them as soon as you bite down, they're just so fragrant. As shiitake mushrooms have a strong flavor to them. Fragrance that bounce to them, that textural bounce to them. Yeah, those mushrooms are great. They're simple, pure. 
Next up, time to explore the upside down meat Yunani's pork. A preserved, I believe, mustard greens at the bottom and I love how she flipped it over on the plate. Mmm, smells great. And this will be good on the rice for sure. You can just smell the aroma of that preserved vegetable. Mm, that is delicious. The flavors are all mingled together. It has a, a little bit of a bitter taste from the vegetable. It might be mustard greens, but yeah. Almost has like this kind of roasted tea flavor to it. It's salty. Oh, it kind of almost has a caramely tinge to it without being sweet. Only thing that would make it better is a little bit of chili oil to combine on that bite. Oh wow, there's so many layers of flavor. And also because the pork fat has melted out of the pork into the vegetable, that just makes the entire bundle, the entire plate so rich. Oh, so good. Oh, that ginger. Okay, next up for this mala pot. Uh, there's noodles in here, there's fish, there's vegetables, and you can smell the Sichuan, Sichuan pepper in there. And it looks like everything, the fish has been fried as well. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, yes. The Sichuan pepper, the saltiness, the chili oil in there. The noodles are very soft and kind of gummy. And then it also has a little bit of a preserved taste, I think because of the, the vegetable in there. But that boosts the umami, adds to the flavor, adds another layer, another dimension. Mm. It's really hearty, really flavorful. Finally, this is the last dish that we ordered, uh, mapo tofu. And I love, you can see a little bit of the, the citron pepper sprinkled on top. You can see some of the bean sauce that they've used in here. And then fresh chilies chopped up in there too. And really, really soft tofu. Mm. Mm. I love how the tofu just melts in your mouth. The silky soft tofu. You can even just like squeeze it between your teeth. That's how soft it is. Oh. And that flavor, you taste the chilies in there. I think there might be a fermented bean paste in there. Um, and then just an essence of the citrusy Sichuan pepper in there. That is comforting and tasty. Add a little bit more. There's a little bit of minced pork in here too. I gotta add a little bit more of their chili oil. Oh, the chili oil is so good here too. Uh, it's really chunky and chilies, but I think there might be some um, fried garlic in here too, but really chunky. It's actually crispy, crispy chili oil and so much smoky flavor. Oh wow. And actually, all of the dishes are really good. Food is outstanding. Almost identical to meals that I've had in China, certain parts of China. But then to be in this location, just a couple kilometers down from the Golden Triangle, along the Mekong River, the breeze coming through, the open air, amazing Chinese food. Oh, this is, this is a fantastic lunch. They're just so fragrant. Probably starting to get a chili oil mustache. Mm. Oh man, wow, that was an outstanding meal. And just again, the peace and relaxation. We're right along the main road, but it's so quiet, it's so peaceful. Every now and then, just a car goes by or a motorbike whizzes past, but just the 
the calmness of life along the Mekong River is a spectacular thing. There's actually nothing that sounds better in life right now than a nap after this meal. Or at least just a, a lean back in the chair for a little while. After that amazing Chinese lunch, uh, yeah, definitely got very sleepy, but this afternoon we decided to come over to what's called Wat Pa Sa, which is a historical site uh, right within the city, the old city of Chiang Sen. So I was just reading about the history of this temple and it's called Wat Pa Sak and Ton Sak is a teak wood tree. And so the temple got its name from the 300 teak wood uh, trees uh, planted on this compound in this area. And the temple, the original structure dates back to the 13th or 14th century. And then also, I didn't mention, but uh, we're also surrounded by the ancient city walls of Chiang Sen. But it's a beautiful area. And now I'm at the base walking around the main stupa, which again dates back to the 13th or 14th century, but it has been, I believe, uh, renovated. And you can see especially the top section. From here, the plan is to go back to the riverside, Mekong Riverside, where in the evening, so a number of street food vendors set up along the river's edge and they set out tables uh, on the ground where you can sit, where you can look out over the Mekong River and order a bunch of delicious food, especially they're famous for a dish of uh, snakehead fish, which is roasted in bamboo. Uh, so that's where we're headed next to the riverside. Okay, actually just one more stop before we get to the river. I'm uh, gonna stop by one more chedi. It's called Wat Chedi Luang. Wow. And this is another chedi just down the, it's, it's within, the, within the historical park as well. Wow, beautiful. So in the evening, starting at about 4.30 p.m. or so, there's at, there could be a dozen different street food stalls all lined up along the river. Uh, they sell a variety of papaya salad, fish, grilled meat, uh, and they put tables just on the sidewalk with mats, low tables. You sit on the ground, you overlook the Mekong River. The weather is great, the air is great, the atmosphere is spectacular, uh, and I mean, they all almost serve the same menu. But yesterday we just walked down here, we didn't eat. Uh, and the uncle at the front here, he was so friendly to us. Uh, and he said, hey, we have some good food here. And so we just decided to eat with him. He's so friendly. And look, he, Ying is already starting to order and he just sits down to order with you. That's how friendly and nice he is and the service. And then again, one of the main dishes that you have to eat, actually they have a full menu of so many different dishes from stir fried dishes to pounded salads, some thumb. But one of the main dishes that you have to eat is the snakehead fish, which is stuffed into bamboo pole and then roasted. Um, and you'll see that almost every stall along here has it. Minam soup do I? Oh man, that is amazing. Uh, it's filled with soup, so I think they it actually kind of boils 
within the bamboo, uh, boils and breezes in a broth and a juice. Um, and uncle said it's a mix of samun prai. I think there's lemongrass, there's turmeric, there's shallots, um, there's some basil, there's some um, uh, dill in there. Oh man, these low tables, you sit on the mats, the river behind you, so spectacularly beautiful. We ordered a couple of dishes. We got the, the snakehead fish. The, you can smell all of those Thai herbs, the lemongrass, the turmeric, the shallots in there. You can see the chunkiness of it. And then kind of a watery soup that goes along with it. That was it, it boiled in its own juices with all of those uh, spices and chilies um, and then topped with herbs. And then we also got shrimp, uh, Mekong little shrimp. Oftentimes they're eaten raw, but we got the, the cooked one with a bunch of different chopped up herbs in there. And then also, it looks like some kind of a vegetable. I'm not sure what that is. Gotta start with the snakehead fish and kind of reduce it. Maybe just taste that, taste that soup first, that broth. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Turmeric, herbs, both cooked within it and then sprinkled on top of it. The dill, the sawtooth coriander, oh, oh, it's like sweet from shallots, and some of the fish oil has come out into it. Oh, it's, that is amazing. And then to dig into some, oh, oh, you can feel the tenderness of that fish too. Oh, tender and juicy because it's just been braised in its own juices and that broth. Oh, so it remains juicy, so juicy. Wow, yeah, that is juicy and so soft it melts in your mouth and so herbal. Wow, I love it. It's really good. Yeah, sticky rice. We like to eat sticky rice, huh? Oh, and he added in a bunch of, what is that one vegetable? Yang, it looks like almost like uh, taro stems. And a lot of onions in here. The shrimp are cooked, the little shrimp. Uh, there's a bunch of herbs, a lot of sawtooth coriander and uh, cilantro and chili. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. The shrimp are a little bit sharp. Because the whole head you eat, the whole head you eat, everything with them. But it's like condensed shrimp flavor. It's nice and salty. It's acidic. I love the, the crunch of the onions in there. And the freshness of all those herbs. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, salty and really good. Okay, and then lastly, we got a plate of Pla Luak Jim, which is flash boiled uh, Mekong River fish. And he said it was a mix of two different types of fish and definitely uh, some catfish, some local catfish in here, which you can also see some herbs in there, some lemongrass, uh, some galangal, and then just flash blanched and dip this into. This is one of the best ways to, to use pure fish because it's just flash blanched. Oh. Okay, be careful of the bones. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so firm. And then that skin is just like a jelly fattiness. Oh, that's good, that's fresh just the meatiness of that Mekong river fish, catfish. And then again, when you have fresh fish, that's one of the best ways to prepare it because that's just the pure thing. Uh, there's nothing covering it up. It's just the pure taste of the fish and that is so meaty. That's straight up like chicken, straight up like chicken. And then we also just got a plate of stir-fried vegetables and that wraps up everything that we ordered for this meal. We didn't order too many dishes because of the huge lunch, Chinese lunch that we had, not that long ago. Just good, simple stir-fried vegetables. There's some Napa cabbage in there, there's some uh, Chinese broccoli, I believe, and then also some cauliflower in there. Kind of salty, uh, a little sprinkle of pepper, a little bit of garlic in there. Okay, back to the trophy dish though. The herb bamboo boiled fish, snakehead fish. 
actually all the food is really good. And I think the best thing to do with this is to get some fish in your spoon and then fill up your spoon with soup to rehydrate it. So you got soup and fish all in one bite. It just melts and juices in your mouth, full of herbs. And along with the delicious food, the owner here is so friendly. And then I have to just mention one last time about the, the natural beauty of this location, the peacefulness, the views across the river to Lao, and then just sitting here enjoying food. What a day it's been. Uh, a learning day, an educational day, a day of delicious food, a day of diversity, a day of history. Watching the boats go by and occasional barges are going by. We're gonna sit here, we're just gonna enjoy the rest of the sunset, the rest of this evening, and slowly eat the rest of this food. Uh, and so I'm gonna end the video right now, but it's been just an amazingly relaxing day, an amazing time to learn about the Golden Triangle, to visit the iconic actual Golden Triangle where you can see all three different countries, uh, the natural beauty, remembering the history, and then, oh, an incredibly delicious Chinese meal, an incredibly delicious food right along the river, and one of the most relaxing meals that you will have in Thailand. So for me, it was also an incredible learning experience today. And so that's gonna be it for this day at the Golden Triangle, Chiang San, Chiang Rai, Thailand. I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, Click subscribe and also click the little bell icon so you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from the banks of the Mekong River in Chiang Rai. And I will see you on the next video.